Yo, what up? Yo, what if you made a Borderlands video and only use Bloodwing? Mm. Like, like no guns, just kill everyone using Bloodwing. I gotta be honest, that sounds like the dumbest, most pointless waste of time I could possibly think of. So I did it. I started my adventure by picking Bloodwing and his chauffeur Mordecai. I followed Claptrap until the first enemies of the game showed up, and it was at this moment I ran into the first significant challenge of the run. I don't have Bloodwing, and I have to kill these enemies. Now when I say this is a Bloodwing only run, I mean no shooting enemies, meleeing enemies, throwing grenades at enemies, or even shooting with cars. The only thing Mordecai can do to damage an enemy is jump on their head or run them over. I mean, after all, he is a chauffeur, and what kind of chauffeur would he be without a little vehicular manslaughter? So basically, I'm stuck. I can't avoid these enemies, but I can't kill them without Bloodwing. I tried jumping on their heads until they died, but I always got killed before I even came close to killing one of them. If I could make it to a shop, I could do the Merchant of Death glitch and get experience. Wait, the challenges! I may not be able to get Merchant of Death, but what other challenges are there? Okay, a lot of these have to do with killing people, but look at this one! All I have to do is shoot a bunch of bullets! As long as I don't shoot those bullets at people, it doesn't count! I'm just getting rid of some bullets! Open containers? The beginning of this game doesn't have much, but oh boy does it have a lot of containers! I opened all the containers and shot all of my bullets into the ground and reloaded the game to reset the containers for two hours, and I was finally level 5. I threw Bloodwing at the enemies one by one, and slowly but surely I cleared out Firestone. After that, I immediately did the Merchant of Death glitch. The skill at the bottom of the Bloodwing tree allows Bloodwing to attack seven times instead of just once. So that's just needed. I stopped at level 25 because I didn't feel like doing the glitch for another hour just to get a few more levels. You have no idea how much I regretted this decision later on. I easily killed Ninetoes and Bonehead and it was time to fight Sledge. Okay, it's time to figure something else out. His shield makes it hard to deal any damage to him, so I need a shock artifact for Bloodwing. This is technically okay, I'm not shooting any enemies. Alright, with this artifact, Sledge should be easy. Okay, that only took 30 minutes. Nah, that's, that's not even that bad. It's all uphill from here. <laughs> You serious? After killing Sledge, I went to the Doll Headlands. I have to destroy eight cars with Bloodwing. Can Bloodwing even damage cars? Nope. Maybe it's because of the artifact. No. I uh, guess Bloodwing just can't damage cars. I think that's it. Wait, maybe if I get an explosive artifact for Bloodwing, it could work. The problem is I don't know where to get an explosive artifact, and I can't progress in the game without killing these cars. Turns out there's a mission that gives an explosive artifact right here in the Doll Headlands, and fun fact, it worked! Now I can blow up cars with Bloodwing. Okay, this Mad Mel guy, I know him. How bad could Mad Mel be? Well, Bloodwing is too slow to catch up with the cars, but I can just wait for them to crash into each other, and then it's game over. Mad Mel? Surprisingly easy. The next major challenge came when I had to fight Krom. The enemies are strong enough now that it takes a couple hits for Bloodwing to kill them, so fighting my way up his canyon was bad, but I managed to find a way to break Krom. What are you aiming at, dummy? You can't hit me, can you, you stupid little bitch? But then this happened. Yeah, he heals. And he heals faster than I can do damage. In other words, there's no way for me to deal enough damage to kill him. Or is there? Boom! Predator skill! Decrease the cooldown of Bloodwing! This is why I wish I had spent the extra hour leveling up, but I guess I'll just have to respec and fight him again. Since there's only one of him, I don't really need the skill that allows Bloodwing to hit multiple targets. That did it! I was able to kill Krom and take the next piece of the Vault Key. Now I have to kill the Janustown brothers. Those two are a joke. Now it's time to go to the Trash Coast and fight the Rack Hive. I'm trying to think of the words to describe this fight, but I'm not sure they exist. 
It was like bashing my head against a brick wall, convinced that the only way to generate enough force to break through was by stabbing myself in the dick with a knife made from the brain cells I lost when I decided to do this challenge. I very well may be mentally handicapped after this, but some would argue that I already was, otherwise I wouldn't have been fucking stupid enough to have done this in the first place. I put a link to the full fight in the description if you want to watch it for some reason. I sped it up by 500% because the fight took well over an hour. But with my sanity in a questionable state, I took the third piece of the vault key and got the fuck out of there. Then I had to go to Old Haven. Bloodwing is doing jack shit damage at this point, so I can only imagine how fucking long this is gonna take. Okay, I didn't kill a single person and I didn't die once. What the fuck? With Tannis' Claptrap rescued, I could go to the Salt Flats, kill Baron Flint, and take the last piece of the Vault Key. It took a really long time, but compared to the Rack Hive fight, it was easy as hell. Before I talk about the final boss, I just want to show you a compilation of Bloodwing being a stupid dumb little bitch that gets stuck on goddamn everything. Just like that, I was at the end. The only thing I had left to do was fight the final boss. The destroyer and steel starred in a tentacle hentai and the fight began. Obviously the first thing I did was throw in Bloodwing. What the fuck? Did Bloodwing just crit? Okay, I'm just gonna warn you, there's a lot to unpack here. Why did Bloodwing crit? Well, the destroyer's mouth counts as a crit spot no matter what you hit it with. Grenades? They crit. Rocket launchers? They crit. And apparently Bloodwing too. Also, for some reason, if you crit with grenades or bloodwing, it applies the critical hit bonus of the weapon you're holding to the damage. This can be used to one-shot the destroyer with grenades. The sniper I'm holding does 200% additional crit damage, but I know how to get a sniper that does 800%. Okay, now I deal 40,000 damage per bloodwing. One more thing. I never mentioned before that Bloodwing's Bird of Prey ability won't target a single enemy multiple times, but if there are two enemies, he'll go back and forth between them. And each different part of the destroyer counts as a separate enemy. So he can hit that crit spot over and over again. Oh, and also I found this spot where you can't get hit at all, so I just watched a movie while occasionally pressing F. With all this combined, the fight only took half an hour. Alright, I've done it. I've proven that Mordecai is so useless that Bloodwing doesn't even need him. If there are any other challenges you want me to do, let me know in the comments. Except you, Tommy. Fuck you.